morning ladies um last night i know it was so late that i made that post about doing a communion together um i just haven't been able to sleep so i have been up worshiping um praying um reading and um the lord just really put it heavy on my heart last night like i found myself crying in bed and i woke my husband up it wasn't it's a little crazy um uh, put it heavy on my heart to do a communion um with you ladies tonight just um just because we need to reset our focus um with everything that's happening there's just so much anxiety and fear and um uneasiness it may not even be like something that's like high anxiety for you but it's still in the back of your mind um gnawing at us and um it can be we need to use wisdom um but to to live out of that place and the lord was just like why did i come why did i um die for you and um so i was up to like three um asking the lord to just give me what he wants me to share um in this communion so i actually made some notes and i'm just gonna read a lot of it scripture um, and then we'll take communion together. So I actually went to the store yesterday and I'm not saying to, but I got some bread, um, for, um, a meal at our house. And so the Lord just was like, I already gave you the bread. Um, and then I just finished a fast. Um, so I had leftover grape juice and I was just like, that's perfect. Now I want you to partake with us. Um, I don't, I don't want um, you to feel like you have to have specifically grape juice and bread do what is in your home if you have apple juice if you have just even water um, and maybe no bread I mean it doesn't matter it's it's the position of your heart when we do this um, to remember what the Lord did and there's just I'm just gonna read some verses to you so um, and then kind of set our mind on why we do communion. And um, it's going to be good. So if I'm looking down, it's because I made a whole bunch of notes. And I just kind of want to stay on topic and um, not get distracted as sometimes I do. I talk a lot. So I have intentions of having a 5-10 minute video. And it ends up being like a 45 minute video. So I'm just going to try to stay focused here. Um, so at the Last Supper, I'm just going to read what... Jesus said when he was with his disciples in such an intimate setting you got if it was Jesus the man Jesus and he had his disciples just a very few short friends so he was very intimate and close with them he goes I tell you the truth he who believes has everlasting life I am the bread of life your forefathers ate the manna in the desert and yet they died but here is the bread that comes down from heaven which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. That's John. Uh, then he said he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he offered it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. Um, this is my blood of covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So when we come to take communion um, to the Lord's table where the bread and, and the blood is, I want to go through that. He reinforces, like he kind of backs what he says. Um, he reinforces his ways, his faithfulness, his promises. Um, his commitments to us, the promises that he, not just in the Bible, there are promises that he has spoken over um, you in a prophetic way, um, that this is a reminder that I am faithful to those words. And then of course, um, taking communion reinforces his love for us, why he came. Like there's no other God, no other God that has sacrificed their life 
for their people. Um, not one other, if you do any historical readings, Jesus is the only God that died for the sins of his people. And we are, our sins are gross. I mean, we, just the weight of our own sins is just, um, we are so undeserving sometimes. So um, when we are at the Lord's table, I want to also let you know it recognizes a place um, that we declare um, the power of the enemy has been defeated in our life. Isaiah 46 says, Remembering the things that I've done for you in the past, for I am God and there is no one like me. From the very beginning, I told you what would happen long before it took place. I keep my word and fulfill my promises. I know the end from the beginning. So remembering is very important to the Lord. Um, him remembering what he done to us. So that means that um, he, to recount, like remembering, this is what remembering means, to rehearse, recount, replay, and remind. So when we come to remember the Lord's table, we're reminding him of the promises that he made over us as well. So it's powerful. Revelations talks about our prayers going before him as a fragrance constantly. So it's not like when we say one prayer, it goes up and it's gone. It actually comes before him multi like over and over. It's in, found in Revelations. It's mixed with worship. Our prayers go before him as a fragrance over and over. So when we pray one time, it could go before him many times. Um, the power of communion is also to remember that he has a perfect way for us. Isaiah 55, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Um, Psalms 128, 1 through 2, blessed are all you who reverence the Lord, um, who walk in his ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor and blessing and prosperity will be yours. Micah 4, 2, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Um, he will teach us his ways not our ways, so that we may walk in his path, which is a blessing. Deuteronomy 11, 22 says, If you carefully observe these commandments, now this was after the Ten Commandments, I'm giving you to follow, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, uh, to walk in all his ways and hold fast to him. Every place you set, your foot will be yours. So the power of communion is also to remember his faithfulness. So the power of communion is to remember his ways how he leads us. And then the power of communion is also to remember his faithfulness. Um, Psalms 36, your love, O Lord, it reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. How priceless is your unfailing love. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. My mouth, with my mouth, I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever and that your established faithfulness um, in heaven itself. Psalms 117, for great is your love for us. Um, your faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Isaiah, O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in your perfect faithfulness have done marvelous things. Lamentations, for his compassion never fails. This is so good. Um, they are new every morning. Every morning. And great is your faithfulness, O oh God. Another one, the power of communion is to remember his promises over our life. Psalms 145, the Lord is faithful to all of his promises and his love loving and is loving towards all that he has made. Um, 2 Corinthians, for no matter how many promises he has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen, which means so be it, the so be it is spoken by us to the glory of God. Psalms 119, your promise is preserve my life. Um, Romans 4, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promises of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully pers persuaded that God has the power to do what he promised. Um, just to go into that for a minute, sometimes in my life, I know the promises he spoke over my life. Um, Sometimes they do look like they will not come to pass. Um, and it's trying. And I'm talking for years. Like, it could try you. And um, it may not make any sense. Like, where are you, God? But he is faithful. 
um, to come. The, as, as, when he was talking to Joseph, Joseph had a whole bunch of things. And it said the word of the Lord tried him. Meaning like, when is it going to come? You promised. When is that? And it was like trying his heart. Do I really trust the Father? Um, so another one more thing. The power of communion is to remember his commitment to us. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5. He who calls you is faithful and he is committed to it. Matthew 18. Again, I tell you. If two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. 1 John 5, this is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Whew. And if we know what he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. Hebrews 9, 15, for this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant. And for those who called may receive the promise. And then lastly, um, the power of communion is to remember his love for us, right? Um, Romans 8, 39, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ our Lord. Um, John 3, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. He did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. 1 John 4, 10, this is love. This is one of my favorite verses, guys, that we, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. Ephesians 5, follow God's example, therefore, and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. Um, last thing that communion does um, and helps us to remember is that he has defeated the enemy in and through our lives. Um, and the verse he gave me is Ephesians 6 for this one. And God raised us up in Christ and seated us with him in heavenly places. So we know that the words we speak, when they're scripture, when they're from him, they hold just as much weight as if he was saying them. Um, Psalms 136, 24, and he freed us from our enemies. Matthew 16, I gave you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He gave us keys to the kingdom of heaven. Like, that's so powerful. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose, loose on earth will be loosed, on heaven, uh, loosed in heaven. Um, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon forged against you will prevail. Revelations 12, 11, they overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. So again, communion reminds us that the powers of the enemy have been defeated. Sickness has been defeated. Um, robbery has been defeated because the enemy has three jobs to come kill, steal, and destroy. Um, discouragement has been defeated. Fear has been defeated. Addictions have been defeated. Divorce has been defeated. Hopelessness has been defeated. Satan, who is our enemy, who is out to destroy us, um, and his lies, they've been defeated. And the best part is, is he knows they've been defeated. It's us that sometimes forget that they've been defeated. Um, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, there's liberty in all of those areas. So Hebrews 4.16, let us approach the throne of grace, the communion table, with confidence. Let us, when we do communion today, we're gonna come before him knowing everything that we just listed and even more in your life, God has already defeated. Satan has already lost. Um, we come before him with confidence because we know and we can trust him um, so that we may ask and receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That's Hebrews 4.16. 1 Corinthians 11, um, 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this is the new covenant in my blood, do this and remember. And whenever you drink it, whenever you drink it, remember me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. So God's will for us when we receive um, communion is that we also receive his forgiveness for our sins what we have um, done, whether that be knowingly sinning um, or iniquities where we sin and it's not something that 
we in our humanly realm get it which sometimes there are things generational things that could be stuck inside of us that we do um so we're talking about iniquities and just original sin um so when we take it we remember his forgiveness um the next one is our health um we take communion because his stripes made us whole so if you're sick in your body if you're struggling with anything he took on the stripes he bore all of that sickness on that one day and gave us the healing we need so when we take communion we take his body that is the healing for our body um encouragement um so when we take communion be encouraged we are partnered with him um in life he is in us we are in him we are grafted in with the father um it gives us hope um a lot of us don't have a lot of faith because we don't have a lot of hope um and so when we take the body we have hope in him that increases our faith in him um wisdom wisdom is from the father um so it does give us more wisdom because we're sitting and we're saying god your will not ours um it does give us peace he is the prince of peace so i i was on a call last night um with quite a few ladies and the theme through the bible study um was peace like there's turmoil he like one of the father's names jesus's names is the prince of peace so even in the midst of chaos we have peace it says we have peace that passes understanding so we have peace that goes beyond human understanding people look at us and we'll go i don't get it that's that's okay <laughs> it's okay that they don't get it we have trust and hope and rest um in a god that is in all time he is in the future he knows what is going to happen we can trust the father he only has good for us right he only has the best even in the midst of dark dark seasons he only has the best for us and he wants to use things to the by the power of his test our testimony we can testify of the father what we've walked through in our life can shift someone because they can see the faithfulness of God in the midst of it. So he is the peace, um, taking communion provision. Sometimes we don't realize that he is all we need. He is the bread of life. Um, so even finances and things like that, when we take it, we remind him of his promise over us. This is what he promised us to provide. He's the provider. He is, um, that's like one of his main things is to give us what we need so good um the next one is freedom when we take this deliverance from things that we have inside of us and we all have stuff not one of us is greater than the other um not one of us is perfect um i am very much in the flesh i'm a female i very much have female emotions that i have to bring into check every single day every day um it's a constant thing and the lord reminds me this is not who you are this is who you are go to the word, eat the scroll. This is your identity. Um, so freedom or deliverance, because where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And then the last one is a fresh and filling of the Holy Spirit. Every time we do it, we just say, come back in, God. Come and take over. Do what you want to do in this, in, in this time in our life. Um, so I want us to receive. So if you have um, your bread um, ready, I want you to take this moment and let's just really position our hearts um, rightly before the Father. So I do this um, anytime I've led Bible studies. This is one of my favorite things to do um, is I like to walk us into the presence of God. Um, it's unique. It's different. But um, in Revelations, <clears throat> it talks about where John went when the Lord took him up there and we have access to the throne of heaven. Um, so when I pray or when I worship, I'll probably start to cry. Um, that just happens um, a lot because that's just where I want to be. Um, I want to go to the throne room of heaven. Um, anyway, 
Um, I'm gonna walk you there. So we're gonna close my eyes. One, because I don't want to cry. Um, but two, just to help picture. So when you close your eyes and you picture something in your mind, that's called your mind's eye. And a lot of times, or imagination, um, a lot of times God uses things like that. He gives us pictures in that place. So I'm um, gonna have you close your eyes and I just want you to picture, let's just do a practice real quick. Picture your kitchen. Um, we're female, so picture doing your dishes. And you can literally feel the dishes and the water in your hands as you see it in your mind. Um, you can see that. So now what I'm gonna do when I pray and I take communion, um, I picture myself standing in front of the throne room of heaven and there's Father God right in front of me and he is on the throne and then it says to the right hand is Jesus, right? And he's standing there and he's making intercession. So he's actually praying for me to the Father on my behalf. So he already knows where my heart is and I'm standing there going, I just wanna be in your presence. Um, and you see Jesus and you see his hand, you see, um, you see the, 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 the markings on his forehead from the throne, from the crown of thorns. You see his feet, you see the piercings, and yet he's a fully alive. And he's sitting there facing God, praying for us. And he's saying, I took everything, I took everything, all of it for Jolyn. And I stand there and I just see Jesus talking to the Father. And what I see is I see the Father turn towards me and he looks at me as if I'm fully brand new. And I'm always so thankful that we are fully brand new in him. And I just picture that and I'm just undone because what I know is inside of me um, as a f human when I'm not walking in the spirit um, is so undeserving of that glance from the Father. And yet we fully deserve it because Jesus stepped in between and took it all. So, when I take the bread, I want you to take your bread right now and just think about that glance from God, just looking at you. You are whole, you are new, you are healed, you're set free, you're delivered. You don't have anxiety anymore, depression, it's gone. The Father is looking at you. I wanna give you this, when it describes Jesus in Revelations, he has eyes of fire. I remember the first time I heard that, I'm like, eyes of fire. Like when he looks at us, it's through fire, it's through burned away. All the, the bad is burned away and he only sees what we are intended to be. He sees the fullness of who we are. So we're gonna remember right now the Father, what he did on that cross to step in between and to take what we deserved. So I want you to take this and do it in remembrance of him right now. Thank you, God, for your body. God, we thank you for the healing, for the restoration, for the freedom that we get from taking communion. And this isn't something that we do just at church, ladies. You can do this anywhere. You can do it every single day. Mm. And then we take the blood. Um, we just think about what he took for us. His blood, so life is in the blood, right? Life is in the blood. 
and he spilled his blood. He poured his life out even unto death. And it says that he did this to receive the reward of his suffering. What is his reward? His reward is us. So when we take this drink, let's remember that he poured his life for us. So do this in remembrance of me. So God, we just thank you for this moment with these ladies. Um, that is just so intimate. It's just so amazing to be in your presence right where we're at in the midst of life, in the midst of a world in turmoil, God, that we can have this moment of peace, Father, that we can be with you. Um, I want to read something my friend wrote about communion. Um, and it's super powerful. And I'm just going to end with this quote. Um, she said, one of my favorite thoughts on taking communion is that every time we take communion, we remind the devil that he lost. Uh, that is one powerful tool, tool that we have. Her husband says, the devil only has power in our lives when we give him the permission. So when we take communion, when we take communion, we actually say to the devil, you can't have control of my life because you've lost. I'm pulling your source of power. We actually take away the power that the enemy thinks that he has and we give the control back to the Father. So um, I hope this blessed you today, ladies. Um, I encourage you to take communion every single day if you can, even if it's weekly, twice a week. Um, come before him every day. Remind the devil of who you are in Christ. Um, remind yourself of who you are in Christ. Remind the Father of his promise has come God. Um, so I hope you guys are blessed today. Have a great day. Love you all.